Monica here. Welcome back to Artistic Lessons. Artistic Lessons is a unit dedicated entirely to artists with disabilities and learning how to create art that is inspired by their own. In the past two lessons, we learned about Henry Matisse and his paper cutouts, Yayo Kusama, and her polka dots and patterns. And this week, we're going to be learning about American contemporary artist Keith Haring and how he created street art that was inspired by dance. This is the artwork we're going to be creating today. It's going to be an entirely unique dance piece that you're going to be transcribing into an artwork. So let's get started. American graffiti and pop artist Keith Haring was born in Reading, Pennsylvania in 1958. His love for art and drawing came from a young age. He would take inspiration from his father, who was a cartoonist, and illustrators such as Dr. Seuss and Walt Disney. After graduating from high school in 1976, he attended the Ivy School for Professional Art in Pittsburgh, where he studied commercial art. After two semesters, he decided he wanted more. He dropped out and moved to New York City for a fresh start. It was 1978 when he began studying painting at the School of Visual Arts and getting involved in the underground art scene in the bustling city. He discovered a new passion for involving the public in his work. He was greatly inspired by the graffiti he was seeing in the streets, and especially in the subway. Graffiti art refers to images or texts painted or tagged onto buildings, typically using spray paint. Tagging is a way for a graffiti artist to write their nickname or show their signature style. This art style is closely associated with street art. Street art is art that is created in public locations and is usually against the law. It covers a wide range of styles and materials, but mostly connected to graphic design with geometric shapes, figures, and text. Keith Haring was known for turning the subway into his own personal canvas. In 1980, Haring began his subway drawings. He would draw on black, unused advertisement panels with white chalk, sometimes producing up to 30 drawings in one day. He would fill these panels with simple images and clean lines with cartoon-like figures, all different but carrying the same stylistic characteristics. From the early to mid-1980s, Herring created hundreds of these rapid drawings that would take minutes to create. This had to be a quick process as graffiti art and street art are considered vandalism and therefore illegal. Herring was arrested several times, but this didn't bother him because he knew the message he was spreading with his art and the public he was sharing it to were most important for making an impact. He loved to draw on the subway because it allowed people to experience art without feeling constrained or out of place. Graffiti is art that is tangible or that can be touched. It is art for the people. You don't have to know anything about art to understand or appreciate it. By the mid-1980s, Herring had amassed a large international audience and appreciation for his art. Living in the East Village in New York City, he had a large social circle including other artist friends such as Annie Warhol and Jean-Michel Basquiat, who he frequently worked with. He began working on large murals all over the world, including one on the Berlin Wall in 1986. He painted linked figures in the colors of the German flag to represent unity between Eastern and Western Germany. While Herring's works may sometimes just seem like a dancing figure or barking dog, much of his public art carried messages for social cause. By using slogans and symbols, he expressed universal concepts of birth, love, and death to a wide and diverse audience. As an openly gay artist, Herring chose to represent the hardships of the LGBTQ community in his art, including gay rights. In the last two years of his life, when he was diagnosed with AIDS, he dedicated his art entirely to speak and advocate for his illness and raise awareness about AIDS. He used his platform as an artist and activist to reach as many people as possible and educate the public. Although he lost his battle at the age of 31, the awareness he brought to the AIDS movement, as well as his undeniable contributions to the art world, will live on for generations to come. During his brief but impactful career spanning the 1980s, 
Herring had a fun and energetic way of creating art which reflected the content of his work. He often listened to hip-hop music while he would work and painted rhythmic lines to express movement and energy. Rhythm is a repeated pattern of movement or sound. While hip-hop is a style of popular music that stems from the Bronx in New York City in the early 1970s, it is connected to black and Hispanic culture featuring rap with connections to global politics, social movements, and the art world. Keith Haring was a key figure in showing hip-hop aesthetics in his art by making drawings and public murals that bring light to the social causes faced by these communities. Now that we know a little bit more about Keith Haring and his art style, let's get started with today's project. You will need 12 by 18 inch paper, scrap paper, a pencil, and markers or crayons. You will also need the assistance of a parent or guardian with a camera to help you take pictures as you create your own dance moves. For my photos and dance moves, I found it best if you pose moving both your arms and legs and standing with a three quarters view. This allows us to see movement and when we put the pictures together, they form a dance. Your poses don't have to be the same as mine. See what you can come up with. You will need four photos with different poses for your final project. Once you have your four photos, now let's learn how to draw our dancing figures. Taking our scrap paper, we're going to start sketching out our dance moves the way Keith Haring would. Looking at the photo we have just taken, let's start off with a stick figure sketch. Drawing the head first, then the body, add some hips, and then move down to the legs. How are the legs positioned in your photograph? In my first photo, my legs are both bent to the left. Don't forget you can always go back and erase. This is only our sketch and we're just learning how to draw the figures. Let's move on to the arms now. What movement are your arms making? In my first photo, my arms are making a downward motion. Once you have your skeleton sketch, we can now go back and circle around the entire figure. When you're drawing the body of the figure, you want to follow the line of the hips to make sure we have a nice and thick torso. And when you have your figure outlined, all that's left to do now is go back and erase the sketch marks that we originally made, leaving only the outline of the body. And there you have it, your first dancing figure. Keep practicing sketching the poses from your other photos until you feel ready to move on to your final paper. Now taking our 12 by 18 inch piece of paper, we're going to fold it in half hot dog wise. Crease the paper and then cut it. You will be left with a 6 by 18 inch piece of paper. This is what our final project is going to be on. We're going to be folding the paper in half again. This time, lengthwise, we're going to be dividing our paper into four sections. Now, looking at our photos and the sketches we just made, we're going to be drawing our figures on our final paper. As you can see, I'm repeating the process of drawing a skeleton and then making a circle around it. This part you can have fun with because you can make your figures diagonal or even turn them upside down. After you've completed all of your drawings, you can now go back and erase the inner markings. It's starting to look like a dance already, but now let's add some color. For this part, you can use either markers or crayons, but I decided to use markers, and you're just going to start coloring in your figures. For my first figure, I decided to go for a pink color, 
And as you can see, my method here for getting the cleanest lines is to outline the figure first and then color it in. For my upside down figure, I went with yellow because I think color is a great way for assigning a personality to your characters. For my diagonal figure, I went with green, and for my last figure, I decided to color it blue to add some range of both light and dark colors. As we learned about before, Keith Haring loved to use vibrant colors in his art, so this is your time to see what bold combinations you can come up with. Now, taking the black marker, I'm going to outline my figures, and doesn't that look so much neater already? The black marker really makes the figures pop out. It's really starting to look like a Keith Haring artwork now, but we're not done yet. Taking our black marker again, we are now going to add movement to our figures. We're going to do that by adding these two curved lines at the elbows, knees, hips, and anywhere where it looks like your figure is in movement. After you've drawn the two lines on each figure, you could stop here, but I think it's more fun if we continue and add the doodles and characteristics that really make it a Keith Haring inspired artwork. This part is for you to come up with your own styles for your figures. This can include dots, dashes, swirls, zigzag lines. I decided to assign a theme for each of my figures and stayed consistent with their own sections. I did dots for my pink figure, swirls for my green figure, zigzags on my yellow, and dashes on my blue figure. See what you can come up with, and also think about how much you want to doodle. Are you going to cover the entire white space, or are you just going to stay in their separate sections? I decided to do a mix of bubble-like shapes around my green and blue figures, and rectangles for my pink and yellow figures. And there you have it, you have now completed your dance. You can lift your paper and really twist it around to see the movement in your figures. I think this is a great project to show Keith Haring's inspiration in hip hop when he was creating art in the 1980s. And there you go artists, you have now completed your own Keith Haring inspired artwork. Don't they look amazing? And I know they're all going to look different because of the different dance moves and patterns we chose, but as you move your paper around, look at how the different arrangements are moving around and dancing. Can you recreate these dance moves or have they changed from your initial photo? Let me know and I would love to see your creations. Thank you for tuning in and I'll see you next week.